Hello everyone and welcome to another video from our channel, Who Died Today America? In this video we will be bringing you a list of famous celebrities who have passed away today, July 6th and in the last few days. Before we proceed, we kindly ask you to show your love and support by giving this video a like. Number 13. Eva Maria Daniels, film producer, known for her work on impactful films like Joe Bell and HBO's Reality, passed away on June 30th at the age of 43. The news was shared by her friend and fellow Icelander, filmmaker Borkur Sigthorsen. Daniels had a keen eye for original content with socially relevant themes, which she pursued ardently after launching her production company, Eva Daniels Productions, in New York in 2010. Her body of work includes significant films such as Reality, which premiered at Berlinale in 2023, Joe Bell, featuring Mark Wahlberg and premiered at TIFF in 2020, and Hold the Dark in 2018, starring Jeffrey Wright. With a commitment to nurturing talent and providing opportunities, Daniels developed strong relationships within the international film community. As Sig Thorsen highlighted in his Facebook tribute, she became an enabler and supporter of numerous filmmakers, assisting them to achieve significant success. Daniels most recent project, Reality, is an adaptation of Broadway's Is This a Room from playwright Tina Satter, who also directed the film. Her premature departure is a significant loss to the world of cinema. Daniel's legacy as a compassionate collaborator and an influential producer leaves an indelible mark on the industry she passionately served. Number 12, George Tickner, the co-founding rhythm guitarist of the iconic band Journey, passed away at the age of 76, as confirmed by his former bandmate Neil Shun on July 5th. The cause of death has not been immediately disclosed. Tickner's unique guitar approach set him apart, producing chordings that his peers described as innovative and unheard of. He played a pivotal role in Journey's first three albums, contributing as a songwriter and guitar player, notably on the band's self-titled 1975 debut. He wrote or co-wrote several of the band's tracks, including the standout of a lifetime. Despite his departure from Journey to pursue a PhD at Stanford University Medical School, Tickner's influence on the band's sound was substantial. His earlier participation in the Berkeley-based group Frumius Bandersnatch also helped shape his journey to fame, which included memorable performances at San Francisco's Fillmore Auditorium. After leaving Journey, Tickner didn't entirely step away from the music scene. He co-founded a recording studio, The Hive, and formed the band VTR with his former Journey bandmate Ross Valerie and Stevie Keys Roseman. He also rejoined Journey for a reunion at their Hollywood Walk of Fame induction ceremony in 2005. Tickner's death leaves a significant void in the world of rock music. His influence as a musician, songwriter, and creative force is deeply ingrained in the legacy of Journey making his loss all the more profound. Number 11, Jose Celso Martinez Correa, Brazilian theater director, widely known as the Celso, passed away at the age of 86 in Sao Paulo on July 6. The Celso was a prominent figure in Brazilian theater. He was one of the founders of the Teatro Oficina, one of Brazil's most important theater groups, known for its experimental style and political engagement. The group played a significant role in challenging the military dictatorship that ruled Brazil from 1964 to 1985, using theatre as a platform for social and political commentary. The Celso's theatre was noted for its innovative approach to performance and its use of unconventional spaces, often blurring the boundaries between actors and spectators. His productions often provoked, shocked and inspired audiences in equal measure. Throughout his career, Zichelso's passion for theater remained undiminished, and he continued to work well into his later years, cementing his legacy as one of the pillars of modern Brazilian theater. The news of his passing has deeply affected the Brazilian artistic community. His unique vision and dedication to the craft of theater left an indelible mark on Brazilian culture 
and his influence will continue to be felt for years to come. His passing marks the end of an era, but his spirit will live on in the theatre he loved so much. Number 10, Martin Stevens, the beloved Quebecois disco singer, passed away at age 69 from a pulmonary disease on July 5th. Stevens ascended to fame in his 20s with chart-topping hits like Jaime La Musique, Love is in the Air, and Midnight Music. The Verdun native was recognized as Male Performer of the Year at the prestigious Adis Gala in 1979, further earning the Disco Album of the Year award for Love is in the Air, his cover of John Paul Young's famous song. The Juno Awards twice acknowledged his commercial triumph, nominating him for Best Selling Single in 1979 and 1980. Stevens' profound influence on the disco scene had audiences around the globe grooving to his infectious music. In 2007, he published his biography, Sexe, Drogue et Disco, Sex, Drugs and Disco, providing readers with enthralling accounts of his glamorous, excessive lifestyle at the pinnacle of his career. His sudden demise has shaken the music world. His family and fans have been paying tribute to him on social media, confirming that Martin Stevens' musical legacy will endure in their hearts. As we bid farewell to a disco legend, we remember the immense contribution he made to the genre and the joy he brought to many with his lively performances. Rest in peace, Martin Stevens. Your disco beats will continue to light up dance floors for years to come. Number 9. Mickey Lukonen Finnish literary prodigy, known for his significant contributions to Finland's literary world, has tragically passed away at the young age of 33 on July 5th. His publisher, W. S. Oway, while not revealing the cause of death, expressed the deep loss experienced by the global literary community. Despite his tender age, Liukkonen had an impressive portfolio including three poetry collections, a picture book for adults, and five novels. His forthcoming novel, Virastila, is anticipated to be published posthumously this fall. Liukkonen's writings, combining global experimental literature traits with a profound understanding of the Finnish language, were critically acclaimed. His debut poetry collection, Valkoisia Runoja, and novel O, received nominations for prestigious awards, further cementing his reputation. Lukonen's life was not solely defined by his literary prowess. A guitarist for the band The Scenes and host of a TV program, he wore many hats with grace. Importantly, he was known for his transparency about his mental health struggles fostering necessary conversations in society. His passing is a profound loss, deeply felt across Finland and the broader literary community. Number 8. Attila Abonyi, a celebrated Hungarian-born Australian soccer player and manager, passed away on July 5th at the age of 76. Abonyi, who represented Australia in the 1974 World Cup and earned 61 international caps during his career, was widely acknowledged as a prominent figure in Australian soccer. Abonyi moved to Melbourne at the age of 10 following the Hungarian Revolution of 1956. He began his soccer career with the St Kilda Junior Club at age 11 and he eventually joined Melbourne, Hungary, where he made his senior team debut in 1962. Abonyi made significant contributions to Melbourne, Hungary, helping the team secure their first ever state league title in 1967. Abonyi later played for St George, Budapest and Sydney, Croatia winning multiple NSW State League titles with the former. His international career was equally impressive, and he is remembered for being a member of the Australian 1974 World Cup squad in West Germany. In total, Aboni scored 25 international goals for Australia in 61 games between 1967 and 1977, making him the fifth highest goal scorer for Australia. Following his retirement as a player in 1979, Aboni switched to coaching at the state level, leading teams like Sydney, Croatia, Melita, and Canberra City. His coaching tenure saw multiple successful seasons, including minor premierships and a runner-up finish. Aboni later lived in Coffs Harbour on the north coast of New South Wales. 
His passing is a significant loss for the Australian soccer community, as his contributions as both a player and a coach left an indelible mark on the sport. He will be fondly remembered for his dedication to soccer and his numerous accomplishments on and off the field. Number 7. Don Reinhout, former powerlifter and world-renowned athlete, passed away in a car at the age of 78 on July 5th. His car struck a tree and he was later pronounced dead at the hospital. Reinhardt made a mark with a victorious record that remains unparalleled. He is famously known for winning the world's strongest man competition in 1979, the event's third year. He also secured second place in the same competition in 1978. His achievements extended to being a four-time IPF Men's World Powerlifting Champion from 1973 to 1976 and a three-time AAU US National Powerlifting Champion from 1974 to 1976. His contributions to powerlifting were officially recognized when he was inducted into the National Strength and Power Hall of Fame in 2018. With an impressive 51 world records to his name, including a 520-pound teeth lift and a two 550-pound car lift, Reinhardt's strength and dedication were legendary. His combined weightlift of 2,420 pounds across bench press, squat and deadlift testifies to his exceptional strength and willpower. Powerlifting has lost one of its most influential figures. Reinhardt's influence and contributions to the sport are immeasurable, and his absence will be deeply felt within the powerlifting community. Number 6 Jan Sierhuis, distinguished Dutch artist and painter, passed away at the age of 94 in Amsterdam on July 4th. Nico Koster, a friend of Sierhuis and noted photographer, confirmed the news. Sierhuis, described as a colorful figure, was friends with members of the avant-garde Cobra movement, including artists Corneille and Carol Appel. Appel, in fact, collected works by Sierhuis signaling high regard for his peers. Sierui was an expressionist whose work spanned various styles, from abstract to landscape and especially human figures. He produced a vast oeuvre of paintings, guaches, sculptures, etchings, lithographs and graphics. To honour his 70th birthday in 1998, the Stedelijk Museum in Amsterdam organised a large exhibition of his works. Two decades later, on the occasion of his 90th birthday in 2018, Museum Jan van der Tocht in Amstelveen hosted an exhibition titled The Studio of Jan Sierhuis. It showcased not only the artist's works, but also photographs, old drawings and other discoveries from his studio. The passing of Jan Sierhuis is indeed a great loss to the world of art but his masterpieces continue to inspire future generations. Number 5. Mario Dumoul, renowned entertainment journalist, passed away at 64 on July 5th after a severe fungal infection following a heart attack. His family confirmed his death, noting that he had been hospitalized at the Philippine Heart Center for a month. Dumoul was just short of his 65th birthday. Throughout his illness, his strength and tenacity shone through as he bravely battled a heart attack and a subsequent cardiac arrest, eager to return home to his family. Dumaul's impactful career spanned several decades as a longtime entertainment reporter for ABS-CBN. His distinct contributions to the field of journalism were widely recognized. In January, Dumaul was honored with a five-point brass star in the German Moreno Walk of Fame in Eastwood City, Quezon City, a fitting tribute to his extensive body of work. The journalist's son, online reporter Miguel Dumaul, had previously requested prayers for his father, highlighting the support and love Mario received from his friends, industry colleagues and even kind strangers. Mario Dumaul leaves behind a substantial legacy in Philippine journalism. His passion for storytelling and his commitment to the industry he served for so many years will be remembered. The loss of this veteran reporter is deeply felt and he will be missed by many. Number 4. Ralph Lundster, Swedish composer, passed away at age 86 from natural causes on July 5th. Lundstern relocated to Stockholm at 15 and embarked on a legendary career in electronic music, 
establishing himself as one of Sweden's most celebrated composers. In the late 1950s, Lundsten founded the famous Andromeda, a visual and electronic music studio. This was a space for Lundsten's groundbreaking work with self-built instruments and computers, leading to numerous pioneering compositions, including the internationally recognized piece Ut i Vida Varlden. Beyond music, Lundsten was an award-winning filmmaker and artist. In the 1960s, he held exhibitions at the Moderna Museet and National Museum. He ran Andromeda from his unique Villa Frankenburg in Nacka, near Stockholm, before donating the studio to the Performing Arts Museum in Stockholm in 2015. Lundsten's life was a testament to his unwavering commitment to innovation and creativity. His impressive catalogue of nature symphonies, space and meditation music, along with his significant contributions to electronic music, will continue to inspire and influence generations to come. Number 3. Acclaimed actor Alan Arkin, celebrated for his Oscar-winning performance in Little Miss Sunshine, has passed away at the age of 89, as announced by his family on June 28, 2023. Arkin, known for his versatility and broad range as an actor, leaves behind a remarkable legacy in film, television, and theater. Born to Russian-German Jewish immigrant parents in Brooklyn, Arkin's family moved to Los Angeles during his childhood. After attending Bennington College, Arkin left to form the music group The Terriers, where he sang and played guitar. Though short-lived, the group had a hit with the Banana Boat song in 1957. Transitioning to acting, Arkin was a founding member of the Second City Improvisational Troupe and made a significant impact in the world of theater. He won a Tony Award for his Broadway debut performance in the 1963 play Enter Laughing and a Drama Desk Award for directing the 1968 play Little Murders. In film, Arkin's role as Rosanoff in the 1966 war comedy The Russians Are Coming, The Russians Are Coming, earned him an Oscar nomination for his first starring role. He also received Oscar nominations for his performances in The Heart is a Lonely Hunter, 1967, and Argo, 2012. Most recently, Arkin's comedic performance in the Netflix series The Kaminsky Method garnered him nominations for Emmy, Golden Globe, and SAG Awards. Tributes from colleagues, including Viola Davis and Patton Oswalt, recognize Arkin's diverse range and profound influence on the acting industry. Survived by his wife Suzanne, sons Matthew, Anthony, and Adam, grandchildren Molly, Emmett, Atticus, and Abigail, and great-grandson Elliot, Arkin is remembered as a loving family man as well as a gifted artist. His loss is deeply felt by those who knew him personally and by the audiences who appreciated his exceptional talent. Now it's time to remember the legends who passed away in the past years. Number 2. Joe Porcaro, an internationally recognized jazz drummer and music educator, passed away peacefully in his sleep at the age of 90 on July 2020. Known for his significant influence on music education, Porcaro co-founded the Los Angeles Music Academy, now the Los Angeles College of Music. His dedication to music also extends to his family, as his sons, Jeff, Mike and Steve, were all members of the band Toto. Porcaro began his illustrious career when he moved to Los Angeles in 1966 and started playing with the acclaimed jazz musician Chet Baker. His versatility with various percussion instruments made him a sought-after session musician, contributing to TV shows like Mission Impossible, Hawaii Five-0, and Daktari. Throughout his career, Porcaro worked with an array of influential jazz, pop, and rock musicians, including Sarah Vaughan, Frank Sinatra, Quincy Jones, Natalie Cole, Madonna, The Rolling Stones, and many others. His snare drum work notably featured on Pink Floyd's track Bring the Boys Back Home from the Wall. Porcaro's lifelong contribution to music education and his indelible mark on the jazz scene will be remembered fondly by many. His legacy continues to inspire musicians and music lovers around the world. Rest in peace, Joe Porcaro. Number 1. Dale Douglas, professional golfer, passed away on July 6, 2022 at the age of 86. 
Douglas, originally from Fort Morgan, Colorado, made an extraordinary leap from a teaching professional to the PGA Tour in 1963, leaving a significant mark on the sport. A trailblazer in his own right, Douglas was the first golfer from the University of Colorado to compete on the PGA Tour, and his contributions were honored when he was inducted into the school's Athletic Hall of Fame in 2010. His victories included the 1969 Azalea Open Invitational and Kemper Open, and the 1970 Phoenix Open, placing him 12th on the money list in 1969. In later years, Douglas shined on the PGA Tour champions. Within a month of becoming eligible in 1986, he won two major tournaments and ultimately claimed victory 11 times on the tour before his retirement in 2011. His defining career moment came when he won the U.S. Senior Open, where he led from start to finish and outplayed the legendary Gary Player. Beyond his athletic achievements, Douglas served as a player director on the PGA Tour's policy board and on the Senior PGA Tour Division board, reflecting his commitment to the sport's governance. Known for his gentlemanly demeanor, Douglas's legacy will continue to inspire future generations of golfers. You can continue watching these videos about recent celebrity deaths in June on your screen. To keep yourself updated, you can turn on notifications.